What's going on, friendos? It's me, LITD Sandman. I'm bringing you uh, the start of the visual novels, and instead of going into, uh, you know, kind of the mainstream visual novels that uh, most people would probably know. We're starting off here with, honestly, one of my personal favorites, Katawa Shoujo. And I know uh, Katawa Shoujo has been subject to uh, quite a number of, you know, uh, what's the best word for it? Controversy? Uh, because I'm not quite sure what the uh, the English name for Katawa Shoujo is uh, actually let me try and look that up here ah yes Katawa Shoujo aka Disability Girls yes if you know uh, the premise for most visual novels you go through the story, there's very, very rarely any action in between. No, there's no actual gameplay. It's just reading a book. And we're going to be reading a book together. That's a very bad way to put it. Most people are going to shy away. No, come back, please. No, come back. Um, and you see, uh, as you're going through this story, uh, choices are going to pop up and as these choices appear we're going we're going to diverge in the story you know so you can multiple people can play this game and not all of them are going to have the same ending of course there are limited endings they're not there's not an infinite number of different choices uh, but what I'm going to do is this is going to be the only video that is going to be public. I'm going to go through here and at the end of every video I'm going to let you guys make your own choice. I'm going to create little annotations over the choices and it's going to link you to unlisted videos. Uh, and that'll continue uh, where no it'll continue by that choice so you guys can basically play the game for yourself without actually having to click you know you can join me too I, I think I kinda thought that was a neat little idea so this is Katawa Shoujo and yes I do know some of the characters uh, I do have a personal favorite but uh, this particular time I think my favorite characters ah, well I'll just I'll just I'll let you guys figure that out I'll just, I won't I won't say anything I'll let you guys try and figure it out on your own so let's get this started And honestly, I've, I've played this once through, uh, and I absolutely, absolutely love it. Yes, the art is a, leaves a little to be desired, but I love the music, and honestly, I like the story. I really do. A light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now, in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. Just how long am I expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4 p.m. Ah yes, the note slipped between the plate, p 
pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more a fan of the letter and the locker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. As I ponder the meaning of this note, the snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in the stagnant world. Their slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time has slowed to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow and a foot startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Someone is approaching me from behind. From behind, oh my. He, he, he saw? You came? A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never as more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn the face this voice, the voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. Iwanako, I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it. I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line, and that was the result. Pathetic. Ah, yes. I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense that I couldn't move a single muscle even if I tried. My heart is pounding now as if it were trying to burst out from my chest and claim this girl for itself. That's a freaky heart. I can't help but think of that heart from, uh... Oh, what was it? Uh, Adventure Ch uh, of Chime? Adventure Time. That, uh... You know, the heart that, like, basically swooned every girl and it took every girl for itself. <laughs> <sighs> So, ah, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches. That's a big word. That's a big word. Okay. The cacophonous noise is music to my ears. Iwanako flinches ever so softly against the gust of wind. As it passes, she writes herself, as if supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine and she lazily twirls her long dark hair around her finger. All the while the anxious beating of my heart grows louder. My throat is tight. I doubt I could even force a word out if I tried. You see... I wanted to know... Oh, that's her, that's her. I wanted to know... If you go out with me... I stand there motionless, safe from my pounding heart. I want to say something in reply, but my vocal cords feel like they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. He, he saw? I reach up trying to massage my throat, but this will only sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. He saw? My whole body freezes, save for my eyes, which shoot open in terror. He saw? The beating of my chest suddenly stops. I go weak at the knees. The world around me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky, Iwanaka running towards me, all these fade to black. The last thing I remember before slipping away are the sounds of Iwanaka screaming for help and the incessant clatter of the branches above. And, yeah, I guess, no, the way the story is told, I guess, I guess it could be a little bit, uh, leave a little to be desired as well. Um, but, no, I don't have much, you know, requirements for me to like a story. No, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be real with y'all. 
I'm not a huge book reader. I don't have a problem with reading books. I love visual novels. I love manga, and I love you know certain other things. But yeah, you know, I understand some people do like it. But I can't sit there and you know just watch or no just look at a line a literal page of words and that just I can't do that that just turn that just turns me uh, right around from you no know, reading a lot <sighs> it's been four months since my heart attack And that whole time, I can probably count the times I've left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts, so I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. A strange word. A foreign, alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. A rare condition. It causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? And I guess it was supposed to make me feel better, more appreciative of my life. It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhages apiece. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Of course there isn't a cure. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted I felt as if I was missed. For about a week my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But the visitors soon dwindled, and all the get well gifts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I'd gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had turned into a class project. Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I, had, I barely had any visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. Now that says something about the world. That really does. At you know, if, you know, if something happens to you, people are gonna, you know, say sorry. They're gonna send their best wishes, but you know, to them, you're just ah. Uh, what's the best word I can look? I get the best analogy. It's kind of like you doing something bad. And then in order to amend for it, atone for it, you uh, you might give some money to the, to the homeless. You might help someone in their time of need. You might send best wishes. It's essentially like sharing a Facebook photo. You know, saying, if this gets so many likes and so many shares, then we'll pay for this child's... Uh, treatment. You, you can help him. And uh, and it's 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 honestly asinine how much the world has changed. You know, everybody's only for themselves. You no, know, so honestly, I'm not saying don't help. You know, if if you if you get the sudden urge. To help someone, you know, if, if even if it's just for uh, amends, uh, for atonement, do it. I'm not saying don't. I'm not saying you no. Know, live with the fact that you may have done something bad or something you feel you've done something bad. Do it. Even if it's only a one-off time for you, that could be the only time for them. And you'll really help somebody out that way. So, no. Be nice to your neighbors, guys. Really. Be nice to your fellow man, your fellow woman, and any other pronouns that I may have missed. <coughs> Tumblr! <laughs> um, 
But yeah. Um. No, just. Just be a nice human being, you know? Come on. Anyway. Uh, where am I? Iwanaka was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they're in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but he told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. So I idly observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest, sl that the surgeries that had left on my chest slowly changed its appearance over time, thinking it was some kind of o an omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows that there is at least some hope. At some point I stopped watching TV. I don't know why. I just did. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. There was a small library at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for more. I found that I liked reading, and that I even became a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands, but I loved the stories. That was what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. I felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass I was trapped inside instead of moving within. A week could go by without me really noticing it. Sometimes I'd pause in realization that I didn't know what day of the week it was, but other times all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonchalance that I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot, and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I were going to cry. But that only happened rarely, and I couldn't even cry. Today the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited but not very. It's like he's trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I'd last seen them. Both of them are even sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? And it's not a party. There's this ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time, sorting his papers then setting them aside as if to make a point of the pointlessness of what he just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine and looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, Zell. How are you today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that, I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. We'll have your medication sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So, so many. I take it from his hand and look for myself feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? Oh my god! That's a lot. Dis dyspnea that that's wait that's wait that wait no I see you right there I see nope don't you get cover I saw that erectile dysfunction I saw that you can't get away from me I see it right under that depression thing you can't get away from me the absurdly long list of medications staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters. This is insane. Side effects, adverse effects, ooh, contradictions. That's I know I, I know the word contradictions. 
But that's not contradiction, that's contraindictions. Contradictions and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. I try to read them, but it's so futile. I can't understand any of it, attempting to only make me feel sicker. All this for the rest of my life? Every day? All day, every day? I'm afraid this is the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that this list fade over the years. Years? What kind of confidence booster is that? Ah, oh, fuck. God damn it. No. Uh. Uh. D uh. D uh. Oh, what kind of confidence booster is that? I'd have felt better if he hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken with your parents. We believe that it will be best if you don't return to your old school. What? Please. Oh, wait. Please calm down, Isao. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Calm down? The way he says it is that he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? Whatever of my concern shows is it's ignored. We all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? Am I... As a 24-hour nursing staff, and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital, the majority of students live on campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence? Is a school for disabled kids? Don't try to... Oh, independence? Is a school for disabled kids? Don't try to disguise that fact. If it really... If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. Of course, that's only if you want to go, but your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. We went out there and had a look a couple of weeks back, and I think you'd like it. It looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, people with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This is an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamn opportunity! Well, you well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to return to school. And while it's not the same one, a special school, that's an insult. That's what I want to say. It's a step down. It's not what you think. All of the students there are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help in one way or another. Your father's right, and many of the graduates of the school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. One of my colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability? That's what a disability is! I really hate that something so important was decided for me. But what can I do about it? A normal life is out of the question now. It's funny. I had always thought my life was actually kind of boring. But now I miss it. I want to protest. I want to blame this lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now. Something about how I can go back to school anyway. But no. I don't say anything. The fact is that I know now it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. The hospital doctors, the hospital, doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I know this, but the thought of going to a disabled school, what are those even like? As much as I try to put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. 
That is all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something, even if it's a special school. It's something. It's a fresh start. And my life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life will look like. Uh, act 1, Life Expectancy. Hey, no, I, I, I like this visual novel because it puts you know, a different spin at it. It, would actually, it actually shows you, you know, what it would be like you know, I I understand some of my viewers. Uh, you know, if some of my viewers may have problems similar to this, some of them may be uh, disabled. You know, in one way or another, whether it be by you know uh, by heart conditions or uh, missing limbs or something like that. And but. It lets those people that have these disabilities, it lets people like me, who, you know, I like to think I don't have any, uh, it's, it gives, lets people like me see what struggles they have to go through just to, you know, get out of bed in the morning. You know, and I I really I really like that so things like yeah I guess games like this kind of um, I guess you could say they they kind of take things like it for granted you know because they're basically making a game about it and I do want you guys to know I know what this game has I'm sorry YouTube I'm sorry guys but I did disable the adult content. So, you know, if you want to do something like that, you can go look up the pictures, you can go do this, you can go do that. So, uh, you know, because I, I feel, you know, the adult content, you know, the sex and everything, things like that aren't very prominent to the story, you know. It, when things like, if you put things like that in, it turns into a regular H game. You know, I don't want that to be what this, what people to remember Katawa Shoujo for. I want people to remember Katawa Shoujo as the opportunity to see what life is like behind the eyes of disability. So, let's keep going. The gate looked far too pompous for what it is, for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. Red bricks, black wrought iron, and gray plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wonder if it looked like what a gate for a school. I wondered if it looked like what a gate for a school would look should look like, but couldn't really decide. Probably no. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. So I walk towards the main building of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms, and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have. More like a park with a clean walkway going past trees and the smell of fresh cut grass and all other park-like things. Words like clean and hygienic pop into my mind. It makes me shudder. I shake them off. Stay open-minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind leafy canopies. Too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. In an uncanny valley. Even though I was told this is my new school, in the back of my head it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if this feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone here. It's kind of eerie. It makes me wish there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. The trees hum with the wind and the green hues flashing all around me catch my attention. It makes me think about hospitals again. 
how they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a common color. Why am I feeling so anxious despite all this greenery? Dot dot dot. Only after I stand in front of the haughty main building, I surprise myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was the last chance I had to turn back. Even if I had no life I could return to. But still, after entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Feeling nervous and with this realization set in my head, I open the front door. A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only logical. You must be... Ni... Na... Niki? Nakai. So you are. Excellent. I'm your homeroom teacher and science teacher. My name is Muto. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy. He looks at his watch. The head nurse asked for you to f ask. Yeah, the head nurse asked you for a brief check-in visit, but there's no time for that now. Oh, should I go later? Yes, afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess that's inevitable in a situation like this. Somehow not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Oof. Alright, guys. And here we go. This is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut off this video. You guys are gonna see annotations over each of these choices. Uh, now, like I said, you guys will not see me update these videos. Um, I will uh, definitely s I will send out tweets about when the next uh, video should be up. However, if the videos, like if say one choice goes on for a prolonged period of time, you know, say it goes on for about an hour or so, um, I will make uh, the second part of that video public. That's what I've chosen to do now. I could change my mind. I could think of something better, but that's how it's going to be for now. So this video is the start. I want you guys to make your own choice. And you no, know, after you like the video, leave a little comment. Uh, leave a little comment saying what choice you made. You know. Toss, toss in a like for every, uh, no, for every choice. So I see how many people go through um, which choice, you know. So because I'd, I'd really be interested in that. So see who the by the end of this uh, series, basically, see who the end uh, favorite girl is, basically. You know, see who people like the most. See, pe see which one people hated the most. So, this has been LITD Sandman. I will catch you guys next time. Janet.